Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Mickey Rooney, Beulah Bondi, and Virginia Weidler in Young Tom Edison. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps we should have wrapped it up in fancy paper and tied a red ribbon around it and called it our Christmas present to you. It's something a good many of you asked for, and I'm sure all of you want. Mickey Rooney and young Tom Edison. And tonight we're giving it to you with our best wishes for a very Merry Christmas. Have you ever thought how much we depend on Mr. Edison here in the Lux Radio Theater? For one thing, he developed the first microphone and motion picture projector and was one of the first to make pictures talk. Then, too, he's responsible for the bulb which is lighting your living room right now. So if it hadn't been for Edison, well, we'd, we'd just have to call the whole thing off. Our play, however, which was adapted from the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer screen success, is not a scientific report. It's an exciting tale of the adventures of a small-town boy with a pack of original ideas, ideas that keep him in hot water. As a boy, Thomas Edison was a kind of Andy Hardy. That makes the casting obvious. The arrow points directly to Mickey Rooney, who comes to us this week from the set of his latest Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer picture, Men of Boys Town. And with Mickey tonight, we have Beulah Bondi and Virginia Weidler. In his later years, Edison gained the gratitude and admiration of the whole world for the things he'd done to make everybody's life easier and more enjoyable. And today, behind the scenes everywhere, scientists are working to make life easier still. In fact, they've done a lot for every member of our audience who's a Lux Flakes user, and I hope that includes every woman listening tonight. They worked for years, and always will work, to make our product outstanding in its field. That's our guarantee that Lux Flakes will continue to make your household tasks easier and pleasanter. We think science is doing an important job for us, and uh, <laughs> I'll make a little wager that the ladies will agree with us. Now here's the story of young Tom Edison, starring Mickey Rooney as Tom, Beulah Bondi as his mother, and Virginia Weidler as Tanny. The curtain rises on the first act. This is a story of triumph. The triumph of a typical American boy who was blessed with three gifts. Courage, imagination, and faith. His name might have been John Jones or Bill Smith, but it happened to be Tom Edison. When Tom was 15... The cellar of his father's house in Port Huron, Michigan, bore evidence of great things to come. For this was Tom's laboratory. An old workbench supported a homemade telegraph, and the battered desk was filled with chemical bottles, all of them impressively labeled poison. On the wall hung a length of rope, which ran up through the cellar door and connected with his sister Tanny's bedroom window on the second floor. This was Tom's latest invention. An automatic window closer. Tom! Oh, Tom! What do you want, Tanny? Tom, there's a rope on my window. I know it. I put it there last night. What's it for, Tom? It's an invention. A window closer. I pull the rope down here in the cellar and your window closes automatically. Saves you from getting cold in the morning. Oh, Tom, that's wonderful. Will it work? Sure, it'll work. Hey, you want to see it? Yes, try it. All right, now watch. It's early in the morning and you call down and tell me you're awake and ask me to close the window. I go over here to the rope and pull it hard, and the window closes. Tom, you broke the window. Yeah, something must have gone wrong. I'll be right up. Tanny, Tanny, why can't you be more careful? You might have killed somebody slamming a window like that. Uh, Tanny didn't do it, Pop. I did. You? You were down in the cellar. Well, I did it just the same. I pull a string down there, and it closes the window up there. I must have pulled it too hard. I suppose it never occurred to you that the broken glass might have hit someone, cut them badly. No, sir, it didn't. No, it didn't. Come on to breakfast and take your hands out of your pocket. Yes, sir, I'm, I'm sorry. I haven't got enough on my shoulders without paying for broken windows. 
Any other father would warm your pants, am I right? Well, I... Don't I... interrupt. Sam, don't. I'm sure he's sorry. After all, it was an accident. Accident. It's always an accident. Now, Sam. All right, children, you'd better hurry or you'll be late for school. Goodbye, Tanny. Bye, Mom. Bye, Father. Come on, Tom. Uh, yeah. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Pop. I'll, I'll be over... Watch out for that milk. Oh, oh Tom. Oh, I, I guess I knocked it over. I guess you did. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll clean it up, Mom. You just sit no, down No, Tom, there. I'll do it. No, Mom, please. Tom, the can... coffee! Oh. Now what have you done? I didn't see it, Pop. It was right on the edge of the table. Go and... to school. Go to school before you pull the whole house down. I, I'm sorry, Pop. Go I... ahead, Tom. Go ahead. Goodbye. Goodbye, Pop. That boy's a real problem, Nancy. Every time you wake up with a cramp, Sam Edison, you take it out on Tom. I haven't got a cramp, and you pampering too much. Well, he's a little different from the others. Yes, that's what I'm worried about. He has that Yankee trait of tinkering with useless things. Like the window upstairs. Like that telegraph wire of his that old man Dingle hurt his leg on. If you remember, that cost us $11. Just wasted. You're inclined to be too easy with him, Nancy. If you're not careful, he'll be no good to himself or anybody else. Well, maybe you're right, Sam. You're wiser than I am. Now, Nancy, when you agree with me so easily, it, it makes me think I'm wrong. No, truly, Sam. I'll handle the boy just as you say. After all, you're his father. Nancy, you're a faker. <laughs> yes, maybe I am. <laughs> What are you thinking about, Tom? We better hurry or Miss Howard will be mad. You know, Tanny, I, I think I've got it. Got what? The way to fix that window. I'll, I'll put a spring under it so it don't fall so hard and then the glass won't break. Oh, gosh, you're smart. Oh, no, I'm not. I only wish I was. You're smart enough for me. You know lots and lots of things. Not half as many as I'd like to. There's so many things I don't know, it scares me. Uh, uh, Princess, look at that grass. What makes it green? Why isn't it purple or black or yellow. What becomes of a noise after we can't hear it anymore? Say, wouldn't it be great if we could keep a sound? Keep a sound? You mean like, like thunder? No, 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 no. Good things. Great things that people say. Men like George Washington and Ben Franklin. <laughs> of course, you couldn't do it, but it's a great idea just the same. Yes, but don't think about it now, Tom. You've got other things to worry about. What things? Oh, just things. What do you mean? Well, well go ahead, what? Tom, I didn't want to tell you, but Miss Howard's mad at you again. Yeah, well, what for? Well, you know, yesterday when she asked me to name the 33 states of the Union, uh -huh. you were tapping them out on the desk for me in Morse code? Yeah, I, I shouldn't have done that. That was cheating. Yeah, that's what Miss Howard said. Huh? You, you mean she caught on? Joe Dingle told her. He knows I can read Morse code, and after you left yesterday, he snitched on you. Oh, I guess I'm in for it, huh? She said she was going to make you stay in the cloakroom all day. Oh, is that all? Oh, I don't mind that. You don't? No, no, no. I got something I want to do anyway. What? Well, look, Tanny. You see this little bottle? It's hydrochloric acid, and this other one is concentrated ammonia. I'm going to mix them both together. Yeah? Then what'll happen? I don't know. That's what I'm going to find out. Tom, will it make a noise? I don't know. I never tried it before. But how do you know it won't blow up? I don't. That's why I want to mix them to find out. Hydrochloric acid. Yeah, that, that ought to be enough. Now, concentrated ammonia, just a few drops. Wow! <coughs> <Ow! laughs> about hydrochloric acid and concentrated ammonia anymore. <laughs> they don't mix. Come in, Miss Howard. Mom, it's Miss Howard, the teacher. Good evening, Mrs. Edison. Good evening. Evening, Miss Howard. Evening. I don't like to disturb you at supper, but I wanted to see you before it got dark. Of course. It isn't safe for a single girl to go walking around at night. Uh, sit down, Miss Howard. Thank you. Is Tom at home? Yes, he's in his room. Then I can speak freely. I'm sorry to be the bearer of unpleasant news, but I suppose you've already heard what happened at school today. Yes, I did. We had a long talk about it, Tom and I, out in the barn. I can assure you it won't happen again. Mr. Edison, I don't believe whipping will help much. 
I might as well tell you, the school board has refused to accept any responsibility for the further education of your son. You mean he's not to go to school? Just that, Mr. Edison. Of course, if you want to appeal to the school board... I certainly shall appeal to the school board. I wouldn't, if I were you. Why not? Because I shall oppose any such appeal. Why? Not only because of what happened today, but because he distracts the other children. Gazes out the window, hums and drums on the desk with his fingers. The other day, he wanted to know what a cloud was. Well, he's just inquisitive. He wants to learn things. That's all right, isn't it? In its proper place, yes. But not in the middle of an arithmetic lesson. You don't understand him, that's all. Oh, nobody understands him. Mr. Edison, I don't wish to be unkind, but I suggest that you take the boy to Detroit to see a doctor. There's no question in my mind but that he's addled, sadly addled. How dare you? You're the one that's addled. Now hold on, Nancy. Compose yourself, please, Mrs. Edison. There's nothing the matter with my Tom that a good teacher can't fix. I taught school in Canada, and I know. You haven't the patience nor the understanding to be a teacher. Well, I never. Tom's a good boy and just as smart as any boy in school. Never did a stupid thing in his life. You're the one that's stupid. Me? Yes, you. Now, Nancy, Nancy, uh, you'd better go, Miss Howard, before something happens. With pleasure, I assure you. You're just a silly old maid, and you don't have to worry about walking around in the dark. Nobody's going to bother you. Oh! Sam, I'm surprised you didn't defend your son. Didn't seem necessary, Nancy. You were doing a pretty good job. Saying that Tom is addled, that's perfectly ridiculous. She's not the only one, Nancy. The whole town's saying it. Everybody thinks there's something wrong with the boy, especially after today. Oh, Sam, I wish they understood Tom as I do. He's, he's different from other boys. He's looking for causes, not effects. I think he found both today. Where are you going? I'm going to take him something. Now, Nancy, don't pamper him. He has to eat, Sam. Tom? Yes? Well, Tom? Hello, Mom. Your friend, Miss Howard, was just here. Yeah, I, I know. I, I heard her. Have you been crying, Tom? Have you? Well, it's, it's not about the licking Pop gave me. It's just that what he said is true. By tomorrow morning, everybody will know I was kicked out of school because I'm a maddled crazy. You're not going to be afraid of what anybody says, not tomorrow nor any other time. Port Huron isn't the whole world, Tom. There's a much bigger world beyond here. And someday you're going to be a part of it, an important part of it. Mom, you know I'm not addled, don't you? Why, of course you're not, dear. Silliest thing I ever heard. But Pop thinks I am. No, he doesn't. I heard him tell you. Shh, your father's just a little upset. Now try not to worry him. He loves you. He loves all of us. All right, Mom. I, I won't do a thing to bother him. That's a good boy. Now won't you eat something? I don't, I don't feel like it. There's something there you like very much. Look. Apple pie and milk. My favorite. Oh, thanks, Mom. Tom? Yes, ma'am? What are you doing down in the cellar on such a nice day? Oh, just fixing up my chemical bottles. Oh, well, be careful of your Sunday clothes. I will. Tom, how in the world do you know what's in all those bottles? They're all marked poison. <laughs> That's simple, Mom. I've got a secret number on every one of the bottles. I look up the number in my little book, and then I know what's in the bottle. Well, that's rather complicated, isn't it? Yes, but if any of the other kids come down here, they'll be afraid to touch them. <laughs> that's not very sociable, Tom. No, but, but it works. Oh, oh, Mom, I fixed that broken window in Tanny's room. I saw it, and you did such a nice job, I'm going to give you ten cents. Ten cents? Mm -hmm. Gee, Willikins! But I broke the window. Never mind. It was an accident. Here's your ten cents. Oh, Mom, gosh, that's great. Now I can send for that chemistry catalog. You'll do nothing of the kind. You're going to spend this ten cents for candy and eat it, like other boys do. But when I eat the candy, Mom, it's gone. The chemistry book, I No can... candy, no ten cents. That's a lot of candy for one fella to eat. <laughs> well, you can share it with Tanny. All right. Now, go on out for a nice walk or something. Get a little air. Yeah, I, I told Mr. McCarney I'd be down to the station today. He lets me fool around with the telegraph stuff. Tom, you won't get into any trouble today now, will you? Oh, of course not, Mom. How could I get in any trouble down at the station? Oh, I don't know, but sometimes I think you could get into trouble almost anywhere. Hello, Mr. McCarney. Well, hello, Tom. Hello, Tanny. Hello. Uh... Busy, Mr. McCartney? No, not much doing on Sunday. Sit down. Mm, 
Thanks. It's nice of you to let us come in here, Mr. McCarney. All the other kids are jealous. Well, seems to me, Tom, I owe you a lot more than I'll ever be able to repay. Oh, no. You mean about the time Tom saved your little boy from being run over by the train, Mr. McCarney? I mean just that, Tanny. Tanny, stop it. That's all over. Gosh, you But you were to... so brave. Wasn't he, Mr. McCarney? Tanny, keep quiet. Now, that's enough. All right, Tom. But you were brave. Uh, Mr. McCarney, uh, will, uh, will you have a piece of maple sugar? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, it's all right. I got a lot more in my pocket. Mr. Inchpin gave me a dozen for a dime. Well, don't mind if I do, then. Here you are. Thank you, Tom. Mmm, good. Uh, can we look at your telegraph? Wait till number seven goes by, Tom. That's her coming in now. Tom, look at all the wires. Why do they need wires to telegraph, Tom? Why don't they send messages through the rails? You can't. Rails are grounded. What does that mean? They're short-circuited. Oh, gosh, you're smart. Could you be a telegraph operator, Tom? Like Mr. McCarney? I don't know. I, I guess so if I kept on practicing. Would you like to be a telegraph operator? Well, sure I would. Only, gosh, there's so many things I'd like to do. Sometimes I'm afraid I'll never get around to all of them. Let's go and watch number seven come in. Huh? All right. You know what I'm going to do someday? I'm going to build a telegraph from my cellar up to your room. You are? Hmm? Then we can talk back and forth and nobody will know what we're saying. Secret messages, huh? Like spies. No, no, like telegraph stations. You'll have your secret call letters and so will I. And nobody will know what they are. What are my secret call letters? Oh, here. Uh, wait till I get this rock here and I'll tap it out for you. Now listen. Dash. Dash, dash. That's T.A. Mm-hmm. That's your secret call, T.A. Gosh, I've got a telegraph call. I feel like a railroad station. Let's go up and look at the engine, huh? Hey, Sergeant, you there. Tom, that man on the train's calling you. Hey. Yes, sir, you're calling me? What you got in that bag, son? Mm, maple sugar. Fine. You want to sell me a piece? Oh, well, yes, sir. Uh, for a nickel. <laughs> All right, hand it up here. Uh, here you are, sir. There's your nickel. Yes. How much did this piece cost you, son? A penny. Well, that's a nice little profit. Yes, sir. Hey, Sonny, you got any more? Well, sure I have. Well, bring it in the train. There's a lot of hungry people here. I'll be right there. Tammy, I'm going to get on the train. You wait here, huh? Tom, remember what Mom says. Don't get in any trouble now. Oh, don't worry. I'll be right back. Here you are, son. Ten cents. I'll take two of them. Uh, yes, sir, right here. Let's have another one, boy. Uh, just a minute, sir. Where's mine? I'm getting it, ma'am. Let's see now. Oh. That's a... Uh, I've only got four left. Well, I'll take two. Here's a dollar. Can you take uh, No, ma'am, I can't. Oh. Uh, have you got change, mister? Well, let's see. Uh, please, mister, hurry. The train's going to start. Here I've got to get... Here you are, ma'am. Here's your change. Wait. Are you sure that's right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ninety cents. Excuse me. Oh, yes. Hey, son, I want another one. I'm sorry, mister. I can't wait. I've got to... Hey. Hey. Hey, let me off. Let me off the train. Stop the train. Come back here. Where do you think you're going? Conductor, I've got to get off. Stop the train. Oh, no, you're too late, son. We're on our way. Oh, please let me go. I've got to get home. <laughs> Mr. Blaze, my sister. No, 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 no. Don't try to jump now. You're on this train. You're going to stay. You can telegraph your sister from Detroit. Detroit? Danny! Danny! Tell Mom I won't be home for supper! In just a moment, Mr. DeMille will present Mickey Rooney, Beulah Bondi, and Virginia Widler in Act Two of Young Tom Edison. And now let's look in on our favorite family, the Brownings. It's late afternoon, and Midge and Dot are helping Mother Browning with a batch of Christmas cookies. Uh oh, there's the back doorbell. See what it is, will you, Midge? My hands are covered with flour. Okay, just a sec. Mother, uh, about the party? Party? What party? What are you two plotting now? Well, remember last year how we made snow for our Christmas tree out of Lux flakes? Well, all the girls were crazy about our Lux tree, and so this year... We want to ask the girls over tomorrow afternoon and have a Lux snow party. A party? So that's why you wanted to make an extra batch of cookies. Well, I think a party would be fun. Oh, Mother, you're a darling. <laughs> Let's see now. You'll need a big bowl... And an egg beater. And some Lux. And a little lukewarm water. That's all you need to make this lovely, real-looking snow for your tree. Yes, you can make Christmas snow out of those same gentle white Lux flakes that you use for washing all your pretty things. It's such an inexpensive decoration, so easy to make, and it lasts right through the holiday season. Now, here's how you make this Lux snow. Take a large-sized box of Lux flakes, 
and empty the flakes into a big bowl or dishpan. Pour in two cups of lukewarm water, just two cups. Then take an egg beater and beat this mixture until it gets soft and fluffy, just like whipped cream. Spread handfuls of this Lux snow on the branches of your Christmas tree. If you want more glitter, sprinkle on some of that shiny artificial snow that you buy in a store while the Lux snow is still moist. Snow-covered branches make novel and inexpensive table decorations, too. And a little of the Lux snow on your Christmas wreaths makes them extra Christmassy and festive. The children love to help with this Christmas snow. Now remember, use two cups of lukewarm water to each big box of Lux Flakes. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Young Tom Edison, starring Mickey Rooney as Tom, Eula Bondi as his mother, and Virginia Weidler as Tanny. When the train that spirited Tom Edison away returned to Port Huron, a reception committee was waiting for him at the station. His sister Tanny, his mother, and Mr. Edison looking very grim. But the boy who climbed down from the train that night was so changed that his family hardly knew him. On his cap was a sign, reading candy for sale. On his arm, a basket piled high with sweetmeats and newspapers. And on his face, a broad, self-conscious grin. Well, oh gosh, can't somebody say something? Here, Tanny, I brought this doll for you. Thank you. And, and Mom, here's a little bouquet of flowers. Tom. And Pop, uh, well, Pop, here, have a cigar. Just what is the meaning of this? Well, I'm in business. In business. Sam, it's very late. Suppose we talk about this when we get home. Come along. Come along, Tanny. <laughs> He's the conductor, you know. He fixed it up with the railroad, and I bought the basket of merchandise on credit. And Mr. Nelson lent me the cap, and I painted the sign myself. Tom, it's beautiful. Huh. Sam, don't you think it's all right? I mean, well, it might help out, you know, Tom making a little money, and... Tom, you really think you can make money out of this, don't you? Well, no, not an awful lot. Not at first, anyway. But after a while, you can, sure. Huh? Oh, 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 yeah, yes, yes, uh, sure. You, you see, I was thinking that maybe I could get permission to put men on other trains. Who knows, maybe someday I'll have a lot of people working for me. People like to buy things on trains. Don't you think so, Father? Perhaps. But I hope you don't think you've talked yourself out of a licking. Oh, gee willikers. You've got to be punished for climbing on that train and going away. But that's not fair. I didn't mean to do it. Shh, don't, Tom. Not tonight, anyway, Samuel. Run along, children. I want to talk to your father. Good night, Mom. Night, Mom. Good night. Good night. Sam, he only wants to help out. The son of Sam Edison, a peddler. Well, if it keeps him busy till he goes back to school. He can't go back to school. They won't take him. I think they will, Sam. Something tells me there'll come a time when they'll understand him the way we do. We? Yes, Sam. When people find out he's not just a silly boy, that he's almost a man. And that deep down inside of him, there's something very real, something very wonderful, struggling for expression. Nancy, you don't really think that, do you? I know it, Sam. I'm as sure as can be. I'm not as tolerant as I ought to be, I suppose. Father and son should be closer to each other. Know one another better. Why don't you have a talk with Tom? I think I will, one of these days. <laughs> conductor on this train, and I've got a certain amount of responsibilities. One of them is to look after the baggage car. Now, what's all this stuff in here? Uh, uh, that, well, uh, 
Just chemicals. Chemicals? Yes, sir. I thought I could set up a little laboratory in here and then I wouldn't lose any time on my experiments. Well, I'm sorry, Tom. You'll have to get rid of some of this stuff. The car is so cluttered up, there's no room for baggage. But, Mr. Nelson... That's my last word, Tom. Razor! Oh, here I am, Mr. Hodges, baggage car. Well, I brought it for you, Tom. Oh, the printing press? Yep, here she is. Where's it go? Oh, right in here, Mr. Hodges. You better give me a hand with it. All right. Yeah, looks heavy. Mm. One, two. Uh, oh, it is. Here she goes. Oh, gosh, it's a beauty, isn't it? All my life I've wanted to own a printing press. How much do I owe you, Mr. Hodges? Well, I carted it all the way over from the yard uh -huh. to two dollars. How much? All right, make it a dollar. Oh, that's better here. You taking the press back home, Tom? Well, I'm not sure yet. I sort of figured on keeping it in the car here. Well, bye, Tom. Well, goodbye, Mr. Hodges. Thanks again. Any baggage? Come on up, Fraser, Tom. Oh, uh, just one piece, Mr. Nelson. Uh, here. Uh, have a corn cob pipe, Mr. Nelson? Huh? Well, go ahead, take it. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you. I was uh, thinking about getting a new one. Hmm. Hey, what's that thing over there? Uh, uh, that? Oh, uh, that's a, a, a printing press. Printing press? Who is it going to? Nobody. It, it belongs to me. Oh. Oh, you're taking it home. Uh, uh, light up your pipe, Mr. Nelson. See how it draws. It's a good one, you know. Costs ten cents. Hmm. <laughs> You won't have much time to use the printing press, Tom. You're not home enough. Uh, that's just it, Mr. Nelson. I'm going to keep it in here in the baggage car. But you're going to what? Now, now, don't get mad. Let me explain. Here, take your corn cob pipe. No, listen, Mr. Nelson, please. I knew there was a catch to it. There's no catch. I want to print a newspaper on the train what? right here in this baggage a car. A newspaper? Next, you'll be raising chickens in here. Listen, Mr. Nelson, there's going to be a war between the states, and people all along the line are going to be anxious for news. Well, but well, we can give it to them fresh, hot off the griddle. Well. Every time the train stops, I can run into the station and get the latest news. But this railroad isn't in the publishing business. No, but it's patriotic, isn't it? Well, if it's... we can tell the people what's going on and tell them the minute it happens, we're not only doing them a service and the railroad a service, but we'll be doing the United States government a service as well. Uh, 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 don't you see that? Well, yes, yes, I do. But suppose the division superintendent finds out. Oh, he'll thank us. He'll think we're loyal, patriotic Americans. And, and that's what we are, aren't we? <laughs> you bet we are. But remember, this is the last thing you're going to bring in this baggage car. Understand? Oh, oh yes, sir. Here, Mr. Nelson, have another pipe. Hmm. Appointed Commander in Chief of the Union Army. Oh, oh, good morning, Captain Brackett. Good morning, Tom. A uh, paper captain, you've got a new Commander in Chief, you know. Yes, so I understand. And a good choice, too. Yes, sir. Uh, captain, I've been thinking. Boy, a stick of licorice, please. Oh, yes, ma'am. Right here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Oh, uh, Captain, I was wondering. Yeah? Do you, well, do you suppose the Army would be interested in a new explosive? An explosive? <laughs> yeah. Oh, they've got lots of explosives, Tom. Oh, but this one's better than anything they've got. Is that so? What's the name of it? Well, I call it the. Tom Edison, high powerful, all explosive number one. <laughs> oh, something you made yourself. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you shouldn't play with explosives, Tom. They're very dangerous. Oh, what's a little thing like danger when you're doing it for your country? This is a wonderful explosive, Captain. You want to see it? I, I've got it right here in my pocket. Well, let's have a look at it. Huh? Now, here. In this little bottle, see? Well, well. Hmm. What's it made of? Well, uh, there's some sulfuric acid in it, and huh? there's some uh, nitric acid. And let me see, uh, oh, yeah, some glycerin. Uh, what was that again? Sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and... Uh, uh, and glycerin? Yes, sir. Tom, that's nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin? Oh, oh gosh. Stand still now. Now, no, no, don't move, Tom. Don't move a step. Here, 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 what's going on? What's that going on? boy has a bottle of nitroglycerin. Nitro... Nitroglycerin! Here, Mr. Nelson, you take no, it. No, no, not me. You, you, you stay where you are. Oh. Don't get excited, friends. There'll be no danger if we're careful. Tom Edison, are you crazy? Oh, I didn't know, Mr. Nelson. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, just you wait, young man. You'll have oh. to stop the train, Mr. Nelson. If he drops that bottle, it'll blow us all high in a kite. Mr. Nelson, stop the train. Now, you stand back. Don't you come near me. Oh. Uh, I'll pull the emergency cord. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Oh. We'll stop too suddenly. Uh, you get to the engineer and tell him to slow down gradually. Oh, all right. Oh. Don't you move one step, no. Tom Edison. No, no, no. Just keep perfectly still, Tom. Captain Brackett, I'm, I'm nervous. 
I'm, I'm shaking. Well, stop it. Stop it. No, 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 don't you think you better hold this? Well, it doesn't make much difference who holds it. It's who drops oh. it, and I'd rather it wasn't me. But if I could only... You... Stand still. Oh. Stand still. All right, I will, sir. I wish slowing down. Uh, somebody open that window. Uh, uh, open the window. I'll do it. No, 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 we won't. Now, listen, Tom. Yes. You walk over to that window, slowly now, and throw that bottle into the river. Yes, sir. Now, wait. Wait, throw it gently, and away from the bridge, downstream. Do you understand? Yes, sir, I do. All right, stand back, everybody. Oh. Now, go ahead, Tom. Throw it. All right. One. Two. Three. <laughs> oh, it's all right, sir. It went into the river. Oh, oh dear. Oh, it's, it's all right, lady. Everything's all right now. <laughs> oh, gosh, I guess it floated into a rock. You little fool. I'll teach you to bring oh, chemicals no. on this train. No, Mr. Nelson, please. You blithering idiot. Oh. You or my boy will do more than box your ears. Now get off. Get off this train and don't you come back. <laughs> What do you suppose is the matter, Doctor? He says he can't hear out of that ear. We'll just pour a little sweet oil in there. That'll help. Keep your head over on the side, Tom. Yes, Doctor. Mr. Nelson kept hitting him on that ear, Doctor. Oh, you can't blame Mr. Nelson, Mom. It was my fault, the whole thing. Just the same, he shouldn't have struck you. Tom, just think. Your candy and peanuts and oranges, all gone. Oh, that's all right. A fine state of affairs. All you've got to show for your work is an earache. Everything happens for the best, Sam. The way Tom was going, it wouldn't be no time at all before he put the railroad out of business. Oh, <laughs> oh hold still. Don't move, Tom. Does it hurt, Tom? Hmm? What? Does it hurt? Your ear? Oh, oh, a little. Do you think it'll affect his hearing, Doctor? I can't say. Not until the swelling goes down. Mm. Sometimes there's nothing like a good box on the ear to sharpen a boy's senses. Hey, Sam? Well, I'll be running along. I'll see you to the door. Oh, by the way, how's that pain in your side, Mrs. Edison? Been bothering you lately? Not a great deal, Doctor. I think it's getting better. Tom. Tom. Oh, oh, yes, sir. There's one thing I shall insist upon from now on. What's that, sir? You're to get rid of those chemicals. Throw them away or dispose of them any way you like. Huh? But you're never to bring them in the house again. But, but why, Father? Why? Because I say so, that's why. Oh, that's a fine reason. All right, I'll give you another reason then, since you don't like that one. Because you're not competent to handle such things. You're too irresponsible and... And... And addled. Is that what you mean? Yes, Tom. I, I'm afraid that's what I mean. And from now on, there'll be no more experiments. You understand? You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. DeMille will bring our stars, Mickey Rooney, Beulah Bondi, and Virginia Widler, back for the third act of Young Tom Edison after a short intermission. Have you ever stopped to think how often old proverbs contradict each other? For instance, too many cooks spoil the broth, yet many hands make light labor. Well, when it comes to preparing that swell Christmas dinner you'll be eating on Wednesday, I imagine most mothers would vote for proverb number two. Mothers appreciate helping hands at Christmas time, hands that help in a lot of ways, like washing the dishes after dinner. Speaking of dishwashing, here's a cheerful thought. Helping hands needn't ever fear they'll become dishpan hands. There's wonderful new quick lux to save you from that. I've told you about the dramatic one-hand tests made by hundreds of women in a laboratory under conditions similar to home dishwashing. The tests were absolutely impartial. Each woman put one hand in Lux suds, her other hand in suds from a different soap, for exactly the same time, 20 minutes, three times a day, for weeks. All told, five popular soaps were tested. At the end of the tests, the Lux hand still looked soft and smooth, while the other hands were red, rough, unattractive. Lux proved kinder to hands than any of the other soaps tested. 
Now, there's a very simple way you can prove this for yourself. Just change from harsh soaps to new quick lux for your dishes. You wouldn't wash your face with a harsh laundry soap for even one day. So why expose your hands to such a soap in your dishpan? It's foolish, because new quick lux is not only gentle, it's thrifty and it's fast. Get the economical big box and use it for dishes every day. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on the third act of Young Tom Edison. <laughs> Laughed at by the townspeople, scorned by boys of his own age, young Tom Edison couldn't stand his troubled life in Port Huron any longer. So late one night, he left a note where his mother would find it in the morning. It's, it's no use, Mom. I'm a failure in this town. So I'm going away to Detroit and start all over. Love, Tom. P.S. I love you better than anybody else in the world. Please say goodbye to Father and, and kiss Tanny for me. An hour later, found Tom in the telegraph office at the railroad station. You know I can read and send Morris code as good as, well, almost anybody, Mr. McCarney. Yeah, it's so tough. Well, then, would you recommend me for a job? Well, yes, but who's going to hire a 16-year-old boy as a telegraph operator? Maybe somebody will in Detroit. Detroit? Are you figuring on leaving home? That's just what I'm doing. Does your mother know it? You know you'll break her heart if you go. And I'll break her heart if I stay. Will you lend me some money, Mr. McCarney? Now, I'll... hold on, Tom. I'm willing to do almost anything for you, but I'm not going to finance you into breaking your mother's heart. I'm doing it to help her. I've got to get away from this town. Now, look, Tom, why don't you just go as far as Fraser? Have a talk with your brother, Bill. Maybe he can straighten this out. Bill doesn't know anything about it. He'd just make me come back. Mr. McCarney, won't you just lend me enough to get to Detroit? I'll pay No, you. Tom, I won't. All right. That's number nine coming. I'll write on the engine with Mr. Miller. Don't be a fool, Tom. A fool. That's what you think of me, just like all the rest of them. Well, I'm going and you're not going to stop me. No, I won't stop you, Tom. But I won't help you either. What was that? It sounded like Tanny. No, oh, Tom. Tanny, what are you doing out at this time of night? I found you no, know, Tom. Tom, you gotta come back. Mama, Mama's sick, Tom. Well, what's the matter with her? I don't know, but she, she's awful sick. Pop left early tonight to go to Fraser. He isn't back yet. Dr. Pender says we gotta get him and Bill right away, Tom. Well, Father's probably on his way home now. I'll, I'll go to Fraser and get Bill. No, you go to the house and stay with Mom. You can help. I'll get Bill. You can't ride on the train alone. You're too little. But Mom needs you. Please, Tom. All right, but be careful. Come back on number seven and bring Bill. I will. Hurry, Tom, hurry. Glad you're here, son. Your mother's been worried. Mrs. Edison, Tom's here now. Tom... Where were you in all this rain? I was, I was down at the station talking to Mr. McCarney. Take off your shoes, dear. I... Uh, I know they must be soaking wet. Mom. Doctor, doctor, what did she say that, that last? I didn't hear her. Come outside a moment, Tom. Dr. Pender, is she... Is she awfully sick? Yes. I should operate immediately. It's her only chance. Well, why don't you? There's no light. I can't perform a delicate operation by lamplight. I can't risk it. But if you don't, what then will now, she... Now, son, we'll do the best we can. But we'll have to wait. Tom. Go in, son. Tom. Mom. Mom, can I do anything? You can help the doctor. Anything he wants. And tell Tanny to go to bed. Uh, uh, you're the head of the house now till your father comes home. All right. 
Mom. Yes, dear. Mom, I, I was going to run away tonight. Yes, dear. I wrote you a little note. I know, dear. Tom, whenever you're hurt, write a long letter saying exactly what's on your mind. Then read it and tear it up. I, w I was mad at Father. I understand, dear. After all, when a man is hurt, he has to get angry with someone. That's what mothers and fathers are for. I'm never going to leave you as long as I live. Of course. Of course you're not. Now, you, you try to sleep, Mom. I'll be right outside. Dr. Pender, it's dangerous to wait till morning, isn't it? Yes, Tom. Every moment we lose permits the infection to spread further. Oh, we, we got a lot of lamps, Tim, maybe 15 of them. Lamp light won't do, my boy. But you said yourself that if we wait around, she may... Dr. Pender, you've got to do it now. You just got to. You can't wait. Tom, you... stop it. Believe me, son, it's the only thing to do. A doctor can't work in the dark. He needs light. Perhaps someday it may be different, Tom. Perhaps someday the world's work won't have to stop when the sun goes down. But that won't be in my time, nor in yours. Dr. Bender. Yes? Doctor, I, I, I was just thinking, suppose, suppose I got a mirror, a big mirror. That'd help, wouldn't it? A mirror? What good would that be? Well, don't you see? A mirror reflects light and magnifies it. We could set it up in the dining room and put all the lamps in front oh, of it. And don't then... be ridiculous. But, Dr. Bender. What's the matter with there's you? There's nothing the matter with me. I'm trying to save my mother's life. You need light to operate, and I can make it for you. Got a mirror in the house? A large one? No, sir, but I can get it. I'll go down to Mr. Dingle's store. He's not open. Then I'll just break in and take it. They can't blame me if I'm trying to help my mother. Um, I don't believe this will work, but we can take a chance. Yes, sir. Go and get the mirror. And on your way back, bring Mrs. McConney. Right. We'll operate as soon as you provide enough light. Is it over? Did you operate? Yes, Tom, we did. Well, is she... Oh, tell me. You'll know very soon now, Tom. But I'm pretty sure that she'll be all right. Oh, gosh. Thanks, Doctor. Don't Thanks. thank me. You saved your mother's life, Tom. That mirror was an inspiration. Oh, the mirror. The mirror? Oh, say, I'd better bring it back before the store opens. Mr. Dingle might be mad. <laughs> if I know Mr. Dingle, he'll tear every hair out of his head. <laughs> They broke in that door right there, see? What did they steal, Mr. Dingle? Well, they steal just a special looking glass imported from New York. I'd like to get my hands on him, that's all. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Mr. Dingle. Here's your looking glass, Mr. Dingle. What? There it is, Dingle. Tom Edison's got it. Come here. Oh, I'm you. sorry, Mr. Dingle. Somebody get the sheriff. Wait, listen. I had to have it, Mr. Dingle. You see, my mother. Never mind your excuses. You stole it. That's burglary. I've got a good mind Mr. to Mr. Dingle, let me break go. into my store. Will but you? Look out for the looking I'll glass. Can you good oh, for this? Please look out. Oh, now look what you did. You broke it. Oh, I couldn't help it. You shut I'll me. teach you to destroy people's property. Oh. Break into my Ow. store. Oh, steal my Ow. looking glass. And Don't then break it right Dingle. in front of my own eyes. Ow. I'll teach Let's you go. all right. I'll Please. get in it, sir. Oh. You let go of the toy you hear. Now listen, Mr. Edison. Let him go or I'll break Now wait, Mr. Edison. Hold on. He broke into my store, stole a looking glass, and smashed it. What? <laughs> Is that true, Tom? Yes, Papa. I had to because... That's Mom's enough. Got... Go on home. I'll attend to you when I get there. But, Pop, if you'll only listen to You me. heard me. Go home. Yes, sir. No, I don't think it's right. I think that's the way it's back. Hey, what's that about? Something must have battle. happened. Oh, I don't see any smoke. Can't be a fire. Yes, Ed Hodge is running up from the station. Hey, Ed! What's the matter, Ed? The bridge is out! What did he say? What's that, Ed? The bridge is out. The storm last night it gave way ten minutes ago. <laughs> You mean the railroad bridge? That's right. The whole trestle's gone at the gully ten miles up the line. Number seven's due to pass there any minute. Number seven? Why, that's the train. Fanny is on. Number seven. Tom, come back here. Bob, I've got to go down to the station. Tom. Tom. No, we've got to do it. Come on, let's right down there. Are you getting through them yet? 
Can't you get any answer, Mr. McCarney? Give me a chance. Give me a chance. You've got to reach him. You've got to. Oh, it's no use. I can't get through to Ridgeway. The wires are down. Number seven passes there in three minutes. That's our last chance to flag her. Then she's a goner. I'm afraid she is. My wife She'll hit the river at 40 miles an hour. Quiet. Quiet. Please. Bob, if you could get across the river, you might No be... chance, Mac. That'll take hours. Mr. McCarney. Listen. Not now, Tom, not now. But maybe I can help. I've got an Let idea. Let me alone, Tom. Can't you see I'm busy? Get out of here and let us alone. I won't. My sister and brother are on that train. I've got as much right as anybody else to be here. Is that so? Go on home. No, please, listen. I can send a message to the train. Yeah, the wires are down and he can send a message to the train. But I don't need any wires. Tom, get out of this office. Go on. Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller. Any news, Tom? No, Mr. Miller. Can I come up in the engine with you? Not now, Tom. They may move me out of here any minute. Please! Now, Tom, listen. Oh, get off this engine. Mr. Miller, I can stop number seven if you'll only let me. Well, go ahead and stop it. Only get off of here. But please listen. I can send a message with that whistle. With what? With your engine whistle. Watch. Take your hand off that cord. But I can send Morris code. Listen. Morris code? Say, what's that you're saying now? I'm spelling out danger. They might hear it on number seven and stop the train. Who's blowing that whistle? I am, Mr. McCartney. Huh? That might work. That's what I've been trying to tell you. How can it work? It's code. Who's going to read it? Tanny's on the train, my sister. She's only a little girl. But she understands code. You know she does, Mr. McCartney. Yeah, she does. I suppose she's sitting in the train just waiting She'll hear for it. She, she's got her own call letters, T.A. Please, Mr. McCartney, let me try it. All right, we got to do something. Miller, get your engine moving. Run down as close as you can to that bridge in a hurry. Tom, you keep on that whistle. I can't leave my station. Go ahead, and good luck. Thanks, Mr. McCoy. All right, Tom, we're pretty close to the bridge. They ought to be able to hear us from here. I'm ready. All right. T, A, T, A, D, A, N, G, E, R. Is mother very sick, Tanny? I don't know, but Dr. Pender said, go and get your father and Bill. I suppose... Well, then it must be pretty bad. I only hope we get there in time. Bill? What's all that whistling for? I don't know. Honey, you know, it sounds like... Bill? Yes? It's dots and dashes. What? Force code. Dash. Dot dash. Dash. Dot dash. That's me! That's my secret signal! It's Tom, Tom's sending it. What? How could it be? Listen. T R A I N S E B E N seven S T O P. Bill, somebody wants to stop the train. That's why they're whistling. Mr. Nelson, Mr. Nelson, come here. Mr. Nelson, you hear that whistle? Of course I hear it. You think I'm deaf? Somebody's trying to stop this train. Yes. Listen. Seven. S. T. O. P. D. A. N. G. E. R. What is she talking about, Mr. Nelson? Ah, uh, she's an Edison. They're all little tits, you know. Her Get brother. Get train number seven. Stop. Danger. Be quiet, Tanny. No, listen. B. R. I. D. G. E. Bridge. I. S. Is. O. U. T. They're trying to tell us the bridge is out. Bridge is out. Did you hear it, Mr. Nelson? Do something. Do something. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. I'm going to pull the emergency cord. Hurry! 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 Hurry!
Finest lad I know. Bum. Oh, oh, hello, Pop. Bum, I'm proud of you. Oh, Tanny's the one father she... I don't mean only this. I mean the looking glass and, and the lamps and, and your mother. Oh, how is she? Is, is she going to be all right? She's going to be fine. Oh. Why didn't you tell me about the looking glass? You wouldn't let me. That's right. I wouldn't. Sorry about that. Hereafter, Tom, maybe I'll learn to listen to you a little more carefully. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, we're all down here at the station to say goodbye to young Tom Edison. Wish him well in his new job as telegraph operator. Speaking for the railroad and myself, we're giving you this job, Tom, because you're a competent man, not just because you're a hero. Mr. McCarney, I, I don't care why you're giving it to me. I'm glad to get it. <laughs> <laughs> you're a real telegraph operator, my boy, and you're going to be a credit to the Grand Trunk Railroad and to me. Are you ready, son? Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Edison, meet Mr. Jackson, superintendent of the line. Excuse me, Mr. Jackson, this is Tom Edison's father. Oh, how do you do, sir? Uh, goodbye, Pop. We're leaving. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, Tanny. Goodbye, Tom. <laughs> and Mom. Goodbye, Mom. You know, I, I'm going to miss you terribly. Goodbye, Tom. God bless you. And Tom, you mustn't forget this. A little package for you. What is it, Mom? Apple pie and milk. Apple pie and milk. My favorite. Oh, Mom, thanks. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye, Mom. 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 Well, Sam, there goes our boy. Yes. A little while back, he was Sam Edison's son. Now I'm Tom Edison's father. And you know, I like it. In a moment, Mr. DeMille brings Mickey Rooney back for a curtain call. And now, since we've reached the night before the night before Christmas, I've asked Lou Silvers to play for you an old Welsh Christmas tune which I've always liked. Thank you, Lou, for that gay song. The words are just as gay. Deck the hall with boughs of holly. Tis the season to be jolly. Don we now our gay apparel. Troll the ancient yuletide carol. We of the Lux Radio Theater and our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join in wishing all of you the gayest, happiest kind of a Christmas and a very prosperous new year. You have made 1940 a good year for Lux Flakes. And we know that that means Lux Flakes have proved helpful to you. Certainly it is a tribute to high quality when we find new Quick Lux, America's favorite way of washing nice things, by a vote of two to one. And that's what our Coast to Coast survey shows. Yes, from San Francisco to New York, from Boston to New Orleans, twice as many women use new Quick Lux for stockings, underthings, nice dresses, and so on, as use any other flakes, chips, or beads. It's new Quick Lux Flakes, two to one. You like it for its speed, thrift, safety. It will always bring you these qualities. Always give you the quick, thrifty, gentle care that keeps everything safe in water lovely longer. You'll find it ideal for so many things. 
Stockings, underthings, dresses, sweaters, blouses, gloves, in fact, everything safe in water. Remember, new Quick Lux comes in the same familiar package, and it costs you no more. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our star. Two kinds of magic brought us this play tonight. Engineering magic of the kind that Edison invented, and the acting magic of Mickey Rooney. And here's Mickey now for a curtain call. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. I was pretty scared, you know, when they gave me this assignment in the picture. A genius like Thomas Edison is nobody for a kid like me to fool around with. Hmm. For our money, Mickey, you were just about right. You know, it got so that every time I turned on the light or put a swing record on the phonograph, I'd, I'd get the shivers. I couldn't push a button without it turning out to be something he had invented. Hmm. You certainly seem to have regained your courage. Yes, sir. I finally remembered about the alarm clock, and, and that did it. I've heard of it, Mickey. How did it work? Oh, well, it was a deli, and I figured that anyone who could think that one up was a regular fellow. You know, he'd get up early and run down to his workshop in the cellar. And there he had a lever fixed up with complicated bunch of ropes and pulleys that ran all over the house. And that connected with another lever in his sister's room. And the whole thing finished up with a string being tied on her toe so she'd be sure and wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a sound deduction, Mickey. <laughs> he must have been a regular fellow. Oh, uh, Mr. DeMille, what's going to go on here next week? We'll ring out the old year next Monday night, Mickey, with a new universal hit. Recently released. A Little Bit of Heaven. And you'll hear the same star who appears on the screen, Gloria Jean. And with her, we'll have C. Aubrey Smith, Helen Parrish, and Frank Albertson. It's the story of a little girl who becomes a famous radio singer, but keeps her head while the rest of her family goes wild. We have an all-star cast and the 12-year-old singing star, Gloria Jean, in the leading role. Gloria Jean, C. Aubrey Smith, Helen Parrish, and Frank Albertson. How can you miss with a show like that, Mr. DeMille? Well, may I say now, so long and a Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh -huh. Good night, Peggy. Good night, and same to you. Before we meet again in this theater next week, the most joyful day of the year will have come and gone. In 1940, there can't be anyone in this audience who isn't thankful for this blessing that is still ours to enjoy. Thankful that everywhere in America, there's still time for Christmas. So when your family gathers from far and near to join the celebration at your fireside, and the lights are blazing bright on your Christmas tree, when the children begin to laugh and play on Christmas morning, please add this hope of ours to the joy and blessing of the day. The sincere wish of our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap, and of all this radio family, that all your family enjoy the happiest of happy Christmas times. Our sponsors join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theatre presents Gloria Jean, C. Aubrey Smith, Helen Parrish, and Frank Albertson in A Little Bit of Heaven. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Virginia Weidler's forthcoming picture is the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer production, Keeping Company. Beulah Bondi is now working in the Columbia picture, Penny Serenade, with Terry Grant and Irene Dunn. Heard in tonight's play were Griff Barnett as Mr. Edison, Lou Merrill as Mr. Nelson, Earl Ross as Mr. McCarney, Warren Ash as Captain Brackett, Arthur Q. Bryan as Hodges, Stanley Farrar as Dr. Pender, Noreen Gamil as Miss Howard, Jack Lewis as Miller, Clarence Strait as Bill, Charles Seal as Dingle, and Celeste Rush and Philip Steed. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>